in the magazine, I wrote about uh, medical diplomacy and how Europe, China, Russia, and the other powers are fighting to occupy a space in the common medical sector. And they are doing so through um, the use of soft power, making donations in terms of uh, medical equipment, building the necessary infrastructure and critical infrastructure in the health sector in Cameroon, as well as training uh, healthcare professionals, both in Cameroon and, and back in their respective countries. So that is what I was trying to point out. And from the sources I talked to, it shows that the uh, battle for supremacy when it comes to medical diplomacy is really uh, serious and it's going to the indications that it's going to last longer. My article is about uh, Kapawa Ships. Um, it's a Turkish uh, owned company that has uh, now have been reduced to a short term contract um, with South Africa. So their purpose is to drill oil um, in Saldana Bay in the in Cape Town. I wrote a story about migration, African migration through the Eastern Route. So we're talking countries like Ethiopia, Eritrea, Djibouti, Kenya, and mostly the, the, the Eastern Africa, where people are fleeing conflict and, and, and harsh living conditions through the Gulf of Aden to Yemen, to Saudi Arabia, with hopes of reaching Europe. So the, the, the route is among the most dangerous uh, uh, migration routes in the world. Uh, it's very deadly and it's a result of EU, EU's policy to block migration through the Mediterranean Sea. <laughs> Yeah. Very happy, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the article you wrote? Yes, this is my article here. Uh, Oasis of Peace in Danger. So it basically looks at the threat of violent extremism. Uh, in the Sahel and the danger that poses to Ghana, especially in northern Ghana where I live. Ghana is surrounded by three countries, uh, Burkina Faso to the north, Togo to the east, Ivory Coast to the west, and uh, the violent extremist groups operating in the Sahel has virtually taken over uh, two-thirds of Burkina Faso. Uh, they are in Mali seriously. Uh, they've taking places in northern part of Togo. And so Ghana is suddenly surrounded by countries that have been targeted and attacked uh, by violent extremist groups. From what we are getting from our experts, security experts, they have their sights on the coastal states, and that includes Ghana. Ghana has become a net logistics uh, base for them. And what's your article about? So my article is on the power play between Asia and the West. So in Zambia, a lot of our minerals are very much competed for by uh, America, the US, and China. And so now the article is just trying to talk about how in the midst of all that power play and how there's all this fight around our natural resources, there are actually real people who are being affected by that. And these are the miners, these are the people who are polluted environmentally, you know, the people who are abused, the labor abuse that is happening, and how we just really desperately need a voice. I wrote about debt the issue of debt, um, so the debt trap that Kenya finds itself in right now. Through the text, you get to see, of course, what the debt has done, the issues that we've had with debt, and of course, the issue of transparency uh, in the debt that we've borrowed, especially from China, because the, the, the contracts that we've had with uh, China, when it comes to the lending policies, we have no access to those contracts. We do not know what they say. At the end of 2022, there was an uproar online that we wanted to see what this contract says, especially for a standard gauge 
railway. People felt that the reason why the contract was being hidden is because it had punitive clauses where we will have some of, of our ports being taken in case we actually default on that debt. At this point, we are actually a lot of revenue, more than 50% is actually going to servicing debt and that is impacting money that's being set aside for development. Yeah. I wrote about visa inequities and how it is a form of neocolonial strength for countries with a lot more freedom to move around and how the freedom of movement or the lack of it has been used as a weapon to keep people boxed in a space where they can only experience their condition and never get the advantages to be outside that condition. But there is a psychological torture and diminishing of a person. You become small so that you can have access to a visa. <laughs> So what happens is a bit of a dehumanization when you go to get a visa. You ask questions, how you can prove the ties you have to your own homeland. For instance, they could ask you if you own a business, if you're married or single, can you present a document to show that you're single, and do you have land, like really, land. So it's ironic because you have to put yourself in that position and if somebody asked half of the Germans here those questions before getting them a visa, how many Germans will travel out of Germany? How many own land? We were supposed to be two random journalists, but uh, my other colleague was denied the visa uh, for reasons that are not very clear. The letter said they were not sure that he <laughs> would come back, which is ridiculous because there's no there's no reason in his application that suggested that he might not come back because we, we submitted exact same documents and for some reason I got the visa and he didn't, which we don't understand it, Taz doesn't understand it. I've been living um, in South Africa for almost 20 years now and also having struggles to get a permanent docu document. So I was denied the visa in South Africa because I do not have a permanent residence and I had to travel to Zimbabwe during the festive season, uh, of which I'm also thankful for, for the intervention of uh, TATS and the German Federal Office. I managed to get my visa in Zimbabwe uh, within a very short space of time. I don't have uh, this German embassy in my country, Liberia, doesn't give our visa. We have to travel to Ghana to get visa. Use this raw materials for, for new mobiles so that in the future we need one or two or four or five or 20 or 30 miles less. And this is one of the programs that really focus on Africa. From all the other trainees, it's open to Europeans, Asians, Americans, but this particular workshop is focused exclusively on Africa, where I come from, where I live, where I worked. And most of what we are discussing here are issues that, are, that affect Africa day to day. Issues like the visa, issues like climate change, issues like the global powers. Now we see the EU, China, Russia, all of them, they are rushing to Africa to see who has, who, who controls Africa. Beginning with the online sessions, which we started having since 2023. Now with the physical meeting, I really expect to learn much face to face. With the sessions we had already, I've learned a lot about uh, digital security, how to enforce my own security as a professional journalist and to stay safe away from trouble and, and surveillance. I hope that uh, by the time we'll be completing this uh, workshop, I would have gained much insight into how the press is functioning here in Germany so that uh, I can tap from it and then replicate it back in my own country. The greatest highlight was to also learn from each of one of us and having experiences from uh, different backgrounds. Um, also with uh, the facilitators that uh, TATS brought in, it has given us a broad understanding of issues that are not only affecting Africa but also are in relation with issues that are affecting 
Europe as well. You know, look at migration to food security to diplomacy and really everything and it was such a pleasure coming from a country that is heavily policed media is heavily policed to be able to speak freely and write with journalistic integrity yet journalistic independence and here we are having these meetings where we get to freely exchange ideas and interestingly help organizations that don't know as much about Africa know Africa from our perspective as for Berlin it looks exactly as I had hoped. I did not anticipate the weather. It's um, about minus three, minus one degrees sometimes here. And in uh, Nigeria, it's about 34 degrees Celsius and hotter. But I've found Berliners to be more, to be very friendly actually, and to be um, quite different from what the norm, and by the norm I mean Hollywood and some stories make of Berliners. So it's been a good experience so far. Before we even got to Germany, we were already operating at the level of family where we, we, we joke on the platform. So this is a huge network opportunity for RAS journalists from Africa. And of course, our partners here, Christian, uh, Ole, they become like part of the family and we collaborate. Going forward, we are looking to do further collaborations. It shouldn't be out of place to see me collaborating with uh, Nelly, for example, to do a two country uh, story. So that networking is what I expect that we will deepen going forward because if you look at it our challenges are virtually the same whether you are in South Africa you are in Namibia or Ghana the issue of climate change is real the issue of violent extremism across sub-Saharan Africa is real the issue of poverty is real raw material exploitation the scramble for Africa it is real across the continent and we, we can only deepen our collaboration from here. The snow, <laughs> the snow has been tough, <laughs> yeah, the weather, but I'm fine. <laughs>